Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Akram and you are watching Knowledge 360. In the previous video, we had covered the topic of schemas in PostgreSQL database. And in this video, we will see the advanced options available for PostgreSQL schemas. So let's do start with the first point that is the schemas and privileges overview. So a schema is a namespace that contains database objects such as tables, views, procedures, functions and other objects. So usually when we create a schema, the schema is owned by specific user, mostly the user who creates the schema, but the schema is not available to other users. So users cannot access objects in schemas that they do not own. So to grant the access, schema owners must explicitly grant the privileges like uses or create to other roles. And in the default setup, the public schema owns everyone uses privilege. Because we know whenever we create any database, the public schema is the default schema and of every role are able to access the public schema of the database. So let's create a table to show the examples. So we create these tables called customers within the sales schema and we are creating through the Postgres user. So Postgres is the owner of the schema and the table. Now let's see how we can grant and revoke the privileges from schema objects or schema. So to allow access to a schema, we follow the syntax of grant uses on schema, then the schema name, then two keyword and then the username to the user to whom we want to give the access. So we perform this grant uses schema to the role my user role. If you see, we have a user role called my user role. So this allows the user to use the objects in the schema. So now let's see how we can allow users to view or modify tables of the schema. So for that we need to give the select privileges to the user. So we can do it. And if we perform this select operation for the customer from uh, this user role, then we should be able to access the schema. So here if you see, we have accessed the table of uh, sales schema from the my user role because I have logged in into the my user role into the sales schema. So as of now we have given the only grant select option. So if I try to perform this insert, it will fail because we haven't provided the insert privileges yet. So this should fail that it says that permission denied for table customers. So we need to give the insert command as well. So let's grant the insert. So insert is given if we try to insert now it should accept it so the insert is performed and we can verify that as well if the data was inserted or not yes now the data was inserted into the customers table and we performed this using the my user role and also we can allow the object creation in another schema so for that the syntax is grant create on schema then the schema name then the keyword to then the username so one example is this grant create on schema sales to the user that is the my user role so let's uh, give this grant so create grant is given now if we create this table using the my user role this should allow us to create the table so the table is created and also we can verify if the table was created or not if we expand this sales schema and refresh in the table section we can see that so in the table section we have the customers to table so this is how we have given the grant create also to the user my user role and if we need to revoke the object creation from all users uh, for a secure setup so for that we use the revoke command so how we do it it is revoke create on schema then the public and then the from public so here there are two times public so one public the first public is uh, refers to the schema public and the second public refers to the all user we can mention the users specifically like we can mention my user role then user one user two like that and also if we mention the public so at so at a time it up it is applied to all the users so let's uh, revoke the create schema so now the revoke is done that means no user can create any object within the public schema of this database which is the company database so now let's see the system catalog schema 
that is the pg underscore catalog the pg catalog is a built-in schema that stores the system tables and built-in data types functions operators and the metadata of the objects so it is always part of the search path and takes precedence unless that is explicitly placed at the end of the path so in the previous video we have uh, seen th in the details what is the search path and how we can set it so uh, the best practice is to avoid the naming user defined tables or objects with the prefix pg underscore so this will not conflict with the system schemas so it will prevent the conflicts with the system tables and the schemas so the example is to modify the search path so we can set the search path like this set search path to then the schema that we want to set the search path then public then at the end it is the pg catalog if we don't do it explicitly so always the pg catalog schema will the take the precedence and the, that will act if uh, the object searching is done within the pg catalog first so this will lead to the conflict so to avoid that we need to set the search path like this so first the schema that uh, we have to use then public then the pg catalog so let's uh, set the search path like this we have set the search path and also we can show the search path using the command show search path we have seen these things in the detail in previous video so in the search path we can see the search path is set like this sales public and then the pg catalog so now let's see the usage patterns for a secure schema management we know that uh, in postgresql schema is a bit tricky compared to other databases there are several patterns for managing schema securely the first step is to make user private schema we have seen in the previous video how we can create user private schema so for that we need to create schema with specific name and that the authorization will be given to the specific user that means the schema belongs to that particular user only and if other user want to access that schema they need permission to use that schema so how we can revoke the create privilege from the public schema that we have already seen the first step uh, to revoke is so the command for it is revoke create on schema then lowercase public that is the public schema then from in capital public in capital public means this is applied to all the users we have already performed it so we have uh, done it again and then we need to create a schema for user each user that we say private schema so for that the syntax is create schema username authorization and then the username so we'll create one schema called user one the authorization will be user one because we know there is a user called user one so let's create this schema so the schema user one is created and the authorization is given to user one so if we see the details of the user one we can see in the properties the owner would be the user user one instead of the postgres user and the next point is to ensure the user is the first in the search path that is the default behavior now let's see how we can remove the public schema from the search path in the previous step we had seen that uh, how we set the search path so now we can also see how we can set the search path by altering the role so for that we need to alter the default search path to exclude the public schema so the command is alter role all set search path then the user defined search path so let's perform it so the search path is altered so that means the public schema is removed from the default search path then we can grant specific privileges for users who need to use the public schema so in the previous step we have revoked the create privileges for all the users but we can specify the privileges whatever it is needed for the schema public from any users the next step is creating shared applications in separate schemas and we can place the shared applications such as tables functions etc in their own schemas and we can grant privileges as and when uh, that is required by the users or roles so for that the syntax is like this grant uses on schema then the shared schema to username so for that let's uh, say cre we create one schema called shared tools and then we can grant the privileges that we need 
on that uh, shared schema to the users wh whoever will require those privileges so here we give the grant of uses select on all tables in the schema share tools to user 1 and user 2 so this way we can make a more secure schema setup so after the privilege is given users can then reference the objects with the fully qualified names or they can include the schema in their search path so how they can include the search path we have seen the syntax the set search path to then the shared schema then the public so we can set the search path like this the search path is set up so if we don't set the search path like this we need to mention the qualified names of every object whenever we perform the task the next step is to retaining the public schema so keep the public schema in the default path but uh, we can limit the object creation privileges so we can use this setup only for single user databases or the trusted groups only so for that the syntax is this grant create on schema public to username so we know in the previous steps we had revoked the create option for all the users now we can give the create schema to the trusted user so for that we can do this grant create on schema public to the user so let's give the grant so now the my user role can create the objects within the public schema so now let's see how we can drop a schema so to drop a schema there are two syntax one is to drop empty schema empty schema are those where there is no objects are created yet so such one schema is user1 schema so let's drop the schema called user1 so for that the syntax is drop schema then schema name so the user1 schema is dropped if we refresh this schema so user1 schema is dropped now and to drop schema that contains uh, objects so we can drop schema like this drop schema schema name and then the use the cascade keyword so one schema that contains the objects is a sales schema so for that we can use this drop schema sales then cascade so the schema is dropped along with two objects that we had created within the sales uh, schema if you remember there are two tables there customers and customers too so along with the schema those tables also are dropped so now let's see the portability considerations of a postgresql schema so in most of the time when we create applications we make the applications to be portable to other databases so the sql standard doesn't define public schemas or allow shared ownership of schema objects so then how we can ensure that maximum portability is available so for that we need to avoid using the public schema when we create any objects so public schema is there by default but we should avoid using it we should avoid creating any object we should avoid uh, referencing to it so and the next point is to use the user private schema and fully qualified object name so whenever we create any object we can make the practice of using the fully qualified object names and also we can it would it would be better if we use the user private schema because in most of the databases the schema name represents the username the example is oracle database so this will make the most of the portability available for the cross databases and some sql databases lack schema support so we need to avoid the schema if uh, cross databases compatibility is critical for our application so now let's see some best practices for schema management in postgresql database the first point is to avoid the conflicts with the system catalog objects by not using the pg underscore prefix for the tables and we need to regularly audit the schema for unnecessary privileges and objects we need to keep checking what the privileges are and who should get those privileges and we should secure the shared schema by restricting the create and uses privileges we need to do it carefully and we need to document the search path configurations and the schema uses patterns so let's discuss the conclusion of the topic schemas in postgresql database schemas are essential for organizing data and securing databases in postgresql and we need to use privileges wisely to control access and ensure the compatibility with sql standards and we should perform regular audits and proper naming conventions to help maintain a robust schema design 
this was all about schemas in PostgreSQL databases that we have covered over two videos. One was the basic video, the previous video that we had uh, covered. And in this video, we have seen all the advanced options for the schemas in PostgreSQL database. So if the video was helpful, do like the video and subscribe the channel to get the notifications for upcoming videos. So in the next video, we'll cover the topic of inheritance in PostgreSQL database. So let's meet in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye bye.